Now, what are the implications of proposed amendments to the World Health Organisation Pandemic Preparedness Treaty and what, if anything, does it mean for us here in Britain? My first guest this evening is Dr Kat Lindley, joining us all the way from the United States of America. Are you there, Kat? Ah, there you are. I'm here. Kat, first of all, tell me about the team uh, of which you were a part uh, and the meetings in the EU Parliament, what, what you were doing there. So we were in uh, Brussels on Wednesday uh, at the invitation of uh, MEP from Croatia, uh, Miros, uh, Mislav Kolakusic, Ivan uh, Sincic, Christine Anderson from Germany, Francesca Donato from Italy, and MEP from Romania, Mr. Terry. And um, they invited us to present on what's happening. And I gave testimony about the WHO pandemic treaty and the IHR uh, amendment. What concerns specifically were you raising about this much vaunted uh, amendment to the treaty? So I hope that everyone really listens and hears what you're saying, because freedom is our birthright. Now, if WHO pandemic treaty or the IHR amendments pass next May, that won't be uh, the case for most of us. So, so far in these past three years, WHO would give recommendations on what happens if there is an outbreak, a pandemic or something. Uh, if this is passed, it will not be recommendations anymore. It's going to be mandatory obligations. And WHO director general, they will have power to actually proclaim whether the country needs to close the borders, what type of uh, medications, tests, future vaccines we can use. They will also require all our uh, member states to give up to 5% of their um, health budget to the WHO because they need that money to actually um, kind of administer this new bu bureaucracy that they're starting to create. The bottom line from our standpoint, the way the United States is looking at it, is we feel that the nations will lose sovereignty, at least will lose um, rights on how they can implement any strategies, whether there is a new pandemic or not. Everything will be done, uh, dictated by WHO. On a day like today in Britain, the coronation, sovereignty, I would contend, should be uppermost in people's uh, thinking. Um, will this, do you get the impression, and would it be true to say that this, these amendments have teeth it's all very well, the WHO uh, making a, a commandment from on high, but do they have the teeth to make, say, Britain go along with what's being ordered? I really think that your MPs need to start looking into this because the IHR, the International Health Regulations, they are part of an international law that our countries have already adopted. So these amendments, if they're passed, we do feel that there is danger that they could be implemented, but because uh, you know our leader can just sign them, uh, or the actually to be the head of HHS, which is Health and Human Services for us. The other uh, instrument is pandemic treaty. Pandemic treaty needs to be ratified in Senate in the United States by two thirds of the vote. But there is some contention that that actually uh, can also bypass the Senate. So I think it's important that every country looks into how these things are going to be implemented because I do think that there are back doors. There is probably already legislation in place that it will be implemented. Kat, bear with me while I bring in uh, uh, my panellists here in the studio, to the, uh, uh, a lawyer, uh, Andrew. How do you react to what uh, Dr Lindley is saying there? Well, I, I've read the report and I think it's uh, the, the treaty and I've read various um, diatribes on it. And, and basically they're saying it's a voluntary treaty, which is in draft form. Uh, there are a number of things it says about not interfering with sovereignty. In fact, the very first line of it, it reaffirms the principle of sovereignty of state parties in addressing public health matters. I mean, that's what it says there. And, and dealing with the other points, and there is nowhere in there which talks about lockdowns, closures, contact tracing or online speech and so on and so forth. Um, I, as I say, so look Looking at that 32-page document, I think we need to say, well, what does it actually say rather than what we think it might say? Kat, Kat, you're listening to that. That sounds as though, it sounds as though we, we, don't, we don't have anything to worry about because sovereignty will always be key. And this is, this is the, the, the cleft stick I find myself in as a reasonable person paying attention. Are we about to lose sovereignty or not? So I appreciate his response. 
but I would say that we actually need to be very careful. There is a difference between pandemic treaty and the international health regulation amendments. In the amendments themselves, there are several provisions that need to be very concerning. They actually remove the whole line about human rights and start talking about equity. They talk about creating a censorship um, campaign on misinformation, disinformation, as I call it, uh, WHO version of Ministry of Truth. They talk about uh, using different regulations and things to approve the new products. And they definitely talk about that they can decide what type of measures are implemented if we have another pandemic. Also, the director general can go into a region if there is a perceived health emergency, look at it, declare a pandemic, and then definitely close border closures and lockdowns. So I respectfully disagree. I appreciate his comments, but even let's say that I'm a little bit too cautious and a little bit too worried. I think we learned these past three years that it's better to be on guard and look into this. As I like to say, better be safe than sorry. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Kat Lindley, uh, thank you so much for your time this evening. I have simply run out of time. Such an important topic. Thank you for your contribution uh, this evening. Now,